for many people, spring means news of floods and tragedy for hundreds of families. For others, the results of the season's heavy rains and thaw are not always this dramatic. A far more common but still painful source of water caused damage is seepage of runoff or groundwater into dwellings. You would not see this scene on the evening news, but it was a tragedy nonetheless for this family. They were victims of occasional, seasonal, or chronic water intrusion. Basement paneling ruined. Several appliances inoperative. Furniture and rugs destroyed. And in unpleasant order. The spread of urbanization, overloading of storm drains, and proliferation of shopping centers and highways have sharply reduced water absorption by the soil. This has meant more water runoff. These factors, along with seasonal weather extremes, have increased water intrusion. The most cost-effective means for protecting against water damage is the sump pump or cellar drainer. It's a commonplace but vital appliance. Many communities will not allow homes to be constructed without a sump pump. The need for this equipment has been growing for decades. According to a recent U.S. Census Bureau study of 80 million single-family homes, 10 million have basement water leakage. That's one in eight U.S. homes. Recognizing this problem, the manufacturers of sump pumps, components, and accessories in 1956 formed the Sump and Sewage Pump Manufacturers Association to assist the public in selecting, applying, and using reliable sump pump equipment. SSPMA is a national trade association with participation from over 80% of the sump pump industry. Over one and a half million sump pumps are sold each year to help homeowners deal with water intrusion problems. Many are installed by plumbers, but an increasing number are being installed by the do-it-yourself homeowner. Whether the homeowner hires the installation done or decides to handle the job himself, he should learn about the pumps, the proper installation, and the simple maintenance requirements. While there are several types of sump pumps manufactured, the majority are powered by a fractional horsepower motor. The motor drives a small centrifugal pump and is automatically controlled by a liquid level device which senses the water level and turns the pump on and off at predetermined fluid levels. The sump pump is normally installed in a pit, or sump, below the basement floor, located at the low spot of the basement. The pump discharges the water collected in the sump through permanent piping out of the basement to a suitable storm drain or natural drainage area. There are two types of sump pumps, pedestal, also called a column or upright, and submersible. They may be constructed of cast iron, engineered plastics, bronze, aluminum, or stainless steel. Pedestal sump pumps are units furnished with an open motor supported by a column attached to the pump casing. When installed, the motor projects out of the sump and above the basement floor. The submersible type is designed to operate underwater. It employs a watertight submersible motor coupled directly to the pump casing. In selecting a sump pump, you should determine your pumping requirements. Ratings are given in terms of capacity and head. Typically, pump performance is illustrated on a graph like this, which shows that the capacity varies according to the total head. Capacity is the quantity of water pumped in gallons per minute or gallons per hour. Head is a measurement of the vertical distance in feet that a pump will push water. The higher the head, the lower the capacity for the same unit. All SSPMA certified sump pumps have adequate capacity to deal with a typical dwelling. Finally, in selecting a pump, look for the SSPMA certified label. Pumps carrying the SSPMA label are certified to meet or exceed the SSPMA testing and rating standards. The SSPMA label is your assurance you're buying a product that will perform when needed.
if installed and maintained according to the manufacturer's instructions. Please note that these pumps are for seepage and runoff water. They are not designed to handle solids, raw sewage, flammable or hazardous chemicals, or drinking water. There are specially designed pumps available for these purposes. Now, let's discuss proper installation. Installing a sump pump does not require special skills or extensive training. As with any important project, it does require a common sense and thorough approach. We will briefly discuss the requirements for a complete system involving a new installation. If your home does not currently have the necessary plumbing and electrical requirements for a sump pump system, we recommend that you consult plumbing and electrical contractors. Once you have selected an appropriate pump, you need to consider how to collect intruding water into a proper sump and how to discharge the water to a proper disposal area. You also need to provide a safe power supply for the pump and consider how to simplify future maintenance and replacement. The means for collecting unwanted water and for removing it is called the intake, collection and discharge system. As illustrated, a typical new intake, collection and discharge system consists of a drainage system and a sump. In a new home, it's wise to plan for the perimeter tile, since this will help avoid flooding inside the basement. In an existing home, decide whether you want to drain the basement only, or whether you also want to install tile underground around the perimeter of the basement to remove water that's close to the house. Drainage is usually collected in a storage basin or pit inside the house, but occasionally perimeter water can be drained to a storage basin outside the house and pumped away from there. Most commonly, sumps are put inside a dwelling, in a basement. The sump should be located about six inches from a wall. If there is no floor drain draining into the sump pit, the sump should be located at a low point of the floor so that liquids will drain into the sump. It's important that the pit floor be solid and provide permanent support for the pump. Erosion of the pit floor may result in the pump being suspended from the discharge pipe, which will put a strain on the pump and pipe and eventually damage both. The pit may be constructed of clay tile, concrete, steel, polyethylene, structural foam or fiberglass, all of which have proven acceptable for this purpose. Other materials of equal performance may be specified in your local building codes. Many members of the SSPMA market sump basins you should consider. Here's a representative sample. Remember, whether you purchase or construct a sump basin, the pit should always be topped with a removable cover, which is of adequate strength to support an adult. The cover also keeps odors contained. Most building codes require that some pits have such covers. The pipe used to discharge water from the sump should be equal to or larger than the discharge size of the pump. Smaller pipe diameters will restrict the capacity of the pump and reduce performance. Most sump pumps are provided with one and a quarter inch or one and a half inch discharge connections. In installations requiring long discharge lines, the pipe diameter should be increased to minimize friction losses. Your system also should have a union or quick disconnect installed in the discharge line to allow easy removal of the pump for cleaning and repairs. Use of a check valve also is recommended to prevent backflow of water into the sump. When a check valve is used, a relief hole, 3 16 inch in diameter, should be drilled within two inches of the bottom of the discharge pipe. By keeping the hole low and directed at the bottom of the pit, you will prevent the small amount of water that sprays from the hole during the pump's operation from spraying outside the sump. Unless a relief hole is provided, the sump pump could airlock and then will not pump water, even though it will run. Pumps are sometimes provided with check valves and air relief holes. The hole will be visible on the casing. Consult manufacturer's literature for this feature. Finally, make sure there will be a properly rated, located, and grounded electrical receptacle. The electrical service, voltage and current, 
must be consistent with the requirements on the nameplate attached to the pump motor casing. The sump pumps covered in this presentation normally operate from standard household electric current, 120 volt single phase, the same as a refrigerator or washing machine. Sump pump installations must be grounded with separately fused or breakered service directly from the main breaker with a three prong receptacle. The outlet should be located not less than four feet above the floor for safety reasons and in accordance with national and local codes. A word of caution, you should never touch a sump pump or discharge piping while the pump is connected to electrical power. The pump should be disconnected from the electrical source before handling in all cases. Never use an extension cord to connect the sump pump to the outlet. Having completed your planning and analysis, you should review your materials list, covering all the items needed in your installation. In this presentation, we'll demonstrate the steps involved for a replacement installation, which many homeowners choose to do themselves. In our installation, all plumbing and electrical requirements are already in place. For a replacement installation, you will need to have or to obtain a sump with cover, discharge piping, electrical service, and an SSPMA certified sump pump. Before installing the pump, inspect it carefully and read the manufacturer's literature. Since there are differences between types of pumps, the first steps in an installation may vary. Let's start with the sump itself. If the bottom of the base is not an integral part of the sump, make sure it is provided with concrete block or bricks to provide support for the pump. If necessary, backfill and mortar the sump tile or sump pit housing in place. Clean any debris, sand, dirt or stones from the sump pit to prevent clogging the pump. Next, connect the bottom section of the discharge piping to the pump. Then, locate the pump in the center of the pit so the pump housing and switch control will not come into contact with the sides of the pit, which would create operational problems. Next, Install the sump cover. To complete the attachment, add a union or quick disconnect. After the discharge piping is complete, connect the pump core to the electrical outlet. Bundle and secure the power core to the discharge pipe to prevent it from draping over the motor or interfering with control operation. Then, run water into the sump to test the pump. Fill the sump with water to the normal turn-on level and allow the pump to remove the water to the normal control turnoff point. Both levels will be specified in manufacturer's literature. Also remember to put the sump cover securely in place. Do not attempt to operate the pump without water. The pump could be damaged if it were to run dry. After the system is installed and operating, the homeowner should perform the routine maintenance suggested by the manufacturer. SSPMA offers an installation and maintenance guide and a troubleshooting chart for your convenience. Routine maintenance should be performed every three months. First, unplug the pump. Then check the power cord and electrical outlet to make sure good contact is maintained and that there is no fraying of the power cord. Next, remove the pump from the sump in order to clean the entrance screen. Check manufacturer's literature for maintenance recommendations. If the sump is used to collect water discharged from a washing machine, cleaning should be done more frequently to remove lint and so forth. Now, clean the sump. Remove all materials which could clog the pump or the pump inlet screen. Finally, replace the pump, plug in the power cord, and start the pump by filling the sump with water. A number of accessories and options are available to supplement your sump pump installation. High water alarms, for example, can advise you when the water has reached a potentially critical level. Other optional accessories include emergency units that are available from pump manufacturers. New products and ideas are continually being introduced. Consult your pump supplier for the SSPMA. SSPMA 
seeks common sense codes that help protect consumers. The association has an active program of working with organizations that write and promote safety and building codes, such as the Building Officials Conference of America, the Southern Building Code Congress, International Association of Plumbing and Mechanical Officials, and the National Association of Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling Contractors. SSPMA also works closely with standard setting and testing groups, including Underwriters Laboratories, ETL Testing Laboratories, and the Canadian Standards Association. SSPMA's own engineering standards establish a uniform method for testing and rating sump pumps. The standards include a specification system covering basic materials of construction for all major components. They detail minimum specifications for motors, nameplate data, service cords, and control switches. As we mentioned earlier, in selecting a pump, look for the SSPMA certified label because these pumps have been certified to meet or exceed the SSPMA testing and rating standards. This presentation has introduced you to the most cost-effective means for protecting against water damage, the sump pump. You now know what sump pumps are used for, why they are important, and how they are installed and maintained. The manufacturers of this important appliance are represented by the Sump and Sewage Pump Manufacturers Association. For more than 30 years, SSPMA has offered you a source for educational and informational materials to give you a better understanding of the product and its use. Look for the SSPMA name on products and literature. Don't settle for less.